So in this case, we're going to extract 2010, which is the second molar of the, of the maxilla. Usually these roots are fused together. So you can, uh, with great success in many times, just loosen the whole tooth all together with all three roots because they're usually uh, in fusion. Um, but in this case, I got a hint from the x-ray that these roots were definitely not fused and that this needed to be extracted just like a regular 209, so the first molar. So for this instance, you do first do the stab incisions around the tooth, like I showed you, and now I'm just gently putting in my loxator at this exact spot on the palatal root. This is a nice spot to begin, and just put a gently pressure uh, I engage the periodontal ligament and I twist and I hold and I see if the tooth moves. If the tooth is moving, then you're in the correct position and you can, you have to count to 10 while you have uh, hold at gentle, gentle pressure. So just two fingers of pressure um, and I'm just trying to move the whole tooth so all three roots gets a little bit loose. I don't want to loxate too much because I would risk fracturing the two buccal roots. So I'm applying a little bit of pressure on the buccal aspect too. And I like to keep these dogs in dorsal recumbency because I can really see what I'm doing and um, it's much easier that way. I, I prefer having them in dorsal recumbency. And when you see it bleeding, that's a nice sign that you have torn or severed the periodontal ligaments, and those are the ones that are bleeding. So here I'm putting on a long, it's called a root tip burr, and um, so I'm sectioning this tooth into the three roots. So first I'm always going straight across here to release the palatal root, and then after I will section the two buccal roots. Be careful you don't go into the uh, into the gingiva. So I like to keep it just a little bit of, of tooth connection left at the buccal uh, aspect uh, and you can later go in and, and and just fracture it with your with your loxator if they are still a little bit attached. But in this case the roots are fairly simple to get out individually, but if I tried like in a normal instance to get this tooth out with just uh, pulling the whole thing out, they, the buccal roots would most definitely fracture. And that would be a very complicated thing to go back in and, and get those out. So I'm just putting some, some uh, pressure of the roots and I'm taking one by one. I always start with getting out the palatal root. And this spot, Mishu palatally, is great for uh, putting your loxator. And you can put them, you can put a good amount of force on this root. It, it will most likely not break. So first root is out. So I work a little bit on the palatal side of these. And those, these roots have to be extremely loose before you attempt to pull them out because they're very easy to fracture. So I have a long curved forceps with some diamond coating on the end so it does not slip. And I just gently rotate and pull. So the pulling and rotating, that's allowed. You're not allowed to bend. So pull and rotate. And you can get them out, like that. So after that, you go in with your with your uh, curettes and you clean out the socket from granulation tissue. Especially, take care to clean the distal part of the 209. Here, I'm just doing a little bit of releasing, so I'm going under the edge of the palatal. Um, 
of the palate here and into the mucosa. And I'm just lifting up okay. this tissue to release them a little bit so I can do a partial, partial closure. Uh, this is exact tooth. It's, uh, you can either leave it open, that's fine, or you can do a partial closure. If this was going to be a full closure, you would need to release a lot more and uh, you don't really have to every time. So these are the three roots.